My friends, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives does not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good that we have done and that he forgives us for our shortcomings in this life, we pray asking God to gather Mary Mar to himself. My Lord Redeemer, you willingly give yourself up in death so that all might be saved and pass from death into new life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Mary into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One, you are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Mary her shortcomings in this life and grant her a place of light, happiness and peace in the kingdom of your glory, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And now I invite you please to, to stand and we'll have the opening hymn for this Mass of the Resurrection for the Happy Repose of the Soul of Mary Marr. There were people of all ages
Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning, everyone. And you're all warmly welcome here to the Church of St. Patrick in Moyla for this Mass of the Resurrection for the happy repose of the soul of Mary Maher from Cashel. This Mass of the Resurrection is being held in accordance with the government and the HSE rules and regulations and directives. And thus it is a private family celebration, as we know, unfortunately limited to 25 family members. So I would also on this occasion like to welcome all who join with us in prayer via live streaming on YouTube. I would now like to extend my deepest sympathy and my welcome on behalf of the people of this parish and my own behalf to Mary's family, to Mary's daughters, Bridge and Maureen and Philomena and Pauline, to Mary's sons, Tommy and Seamus, Malachi and Michael. And we'd like to extend our deepest sympathy to, sympathy to Mary's sister-in-law, Mary Tuffy, to Mary's daughters-in-law, to Mary's sons-in-law, to her many nieces and nephews, to her grandchildren and great-grandchildren, to her relatives, neighbours and friends. You are indeed welcome to this celebration, be it physically or virtually, and our deepest sympathy to one and to all. And so this morning, as we gather around the mortal remains of Mary Maher for the final time, we do so in our home church here of St. Patrick's Church, Moila. And as resur resurrection people, and that is what we are, we believe that as followers of Christ, we can share in the glory of Easter Sunday morning. It is our prayer at this Mass that Mary Maher, who was devout both in the practice and the living out of her Christian faith. We pray that Mary will follow Christ in death and thus rise to new and everlasting life in heaven, where, please God, she will be reunited with her husband Jimmy and all her loved ones who have gone before her to the Lord. We pray also at this Mass this morning for all who mourn the passing of Mary from this life. We pray that God will comfort you at this time of loss and anguish in your lives. And so now, to prepare ourselves to offer this Mass worthily with these intentions in mind, we begin by asking God for his mercy. Lord, you give us strength when we are weak. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you give us courage when we are afraid. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you give us new heart when we fail. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And now we have our opening prayer for this Mass of the Resurrection. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Mary Maher, whom you have called to journey to you, and since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland to delight in its everlasting joys. We ask this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So I invite you please to be seated as we prepare ourselves now to listen to the Word of God. And Malachi and Maureen will share the Word of God with us today. So I invite Malachi and Maureen to come forward. And they're going to use the ambo here to my right.
First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our true God, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes and, uh, and oil of gladness instead of mourning. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The response is, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. Response. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no even would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. Response. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. Response. The Lord is my shepherd, Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Response. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, our love is not to be just words or mere talk, but something real and active. Only by this can we be certain that we are children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence, whatever accusations may arise against us. Because God is greater than our conscience and he knows everything. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence. And whatever we ask him, we shall receive, because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life that he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as he told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God, and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the spirit he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Maliki, and morning for sharing the word of God with us today. And so now I'd like to invite you to stand for the gospel acclamation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him and make our home with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words, and my word is not my own. It is the word of the one who sent me. I have said these things, things to you while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, 
whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said. Peace I bequeath to you, my own peace I give to you, a peace the world cannot give. This is my gift to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You have heard me say, I am going away and shall return. If you loved me, you would have been glad to know that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. It is with deep sadness that we learned on Tuesday morning last of Mary Maher's passing from this life. Surrounded by love, the love of family members, and by the love and care of the staff at Northwest Hospice in Sligo, Mary peacefully slipped from this life. A cloud of grief immediately descended upon Cashel and all its surrounding villages and indeed throughout our parish and surrounding parishes. And this is due in large measure to the fact that Mary was held in such high esteem by so many people. And secondly, that Mary's passing from this life, despite her elderly status, appeared to happen suddenly. And so today, we gather in prayer around Mary's mortal remains, We do pray that Mary has a new birthday, the 4th of May, the birthday of the beginning of her new and eternal life in heaven, where, please God, she is reunited with her husband, Jimmy, and all her loved ones who have gone before her to the Lord. Today, as we indulge in a spirit of sadness at Mary's passing from this life, we also indulge in a spirit of thankfulness and genuine gratitude. Yes, we thank God for the gift of Mary's life, a life lived to the full. And we thank God for the wonderful legacy which Mary leaves behind her. Mary Maher lived life longer than most. She lived fourscore years and ten and more. And that must have been because Mary was given a greater share in the Lord's service, in the Lord's work here on earth. In the words of one of our most recent saints to be canonized, John Henry Newman, God has created me to do him some service. He has committed some work to me, which he has not committed to another. I have my mission I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told it in the next. And indeed, Mary Maher, you are not to be found wanting. Your service to the Lord was accomplished and done so with much hard work and sacrifice, with no recriminations, but with loads of compassion and forgiveness. And that that mixed with deep devotion and trust in our Lord and Saviour. God, indeed, must be very well pleased with you, Mary. Mary often spoke to me about her life. She described her life in simple terms as a hard life, yet she never wallowed in self-pity. Yes, back then, socio-economically, life was different. Times were frugal. Families were larger. Immigration was a necessary feature of life for most men in rural Ireland. Women often had to maintain a home, rear and educate the children, and work the farm, all, all at the same time, while her husband was away working in England or Scotland. And this situation was sometimes exacerbated by external factors, which made for an even more arduous and challenging lifestyle. For the woman of the house. 
Mary, in her own words, knew, knew such hardship. Yet, with wonderful self-determination, aided by a staunch faith, which empowered her to overcome incredible obstacles, and which energised her to keep her head above water, and at the same time to manage very successfully her multifaceted responsibilities, Mary Maher coped, and coped very well. Mary's tone of voice always struck me forcibly. There was such strength in that tone of voice. It resonated of inner strength, of her mortal fibre, of her resilience, of her determination to move on, to achieve, to master, and to overcome. Mary was forever upbeat, spirited, and grateful, especially to God. I personally was always refreshed by my visits to Mary's home. She was so welcoming and complimentary. In particular, in particular, I enjoyed her positivity. I can hear her state clearly, I always think about living, never about dying. Mary, with her worthy and worldly gems and one-liners, enhanced my life and everyone and anyone who listened to her. As we reminisce today and during the days and the weeks ahead of us, there is no doubt in our minds that what each one of us will recall most fondly from Mary's legacy is her outstanding faith. Her personal relationship with Christ was the fulcrum of her whole being, of her whole life. Yes, this is what motivated Mary to be the quality human being that she was and to be what I call the servant of servants. Mary was taught the basics of her faith in her family home in Clun Omni. This faith was then nurtured both in her national school and in her home church. And it became the bedrock of both her personal life and her family life. Mary's personal relationship with Christ was nurtured on a daily basis from an early age. As we know, Mary prayed so many times every day. She recited the rosary at least once every day. She prayed her novena prayers, novenas that were honoured without fail. Mary went through her prayer books each day, especially her office. And no wonder her prayer books, yes, books, are so well thumbed. Attendance at Mass and the sacraments was an integral part of Mary's spiritual life. And literally nothing compared to the spiritual joy that Mary received from attendance at Mass and in receiving the Blessed Sacrament. And when Mary wasn't able to attend Mass, she tuned in to Midwest Radio or to RTE for their prayer services. Mary also had great devotion to the saints, and she had a special devotion to Our Lady. The Rosary and the Memoraries were always recited with great devotion. Yes, Mary had great devotion to Our Lady of Knock and to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. She looked forward immensely to the monthly meetings of the Carmelites. So yes, I say, God was well known to Mary, and Mary Maher was well known to God. And so today, as we celebrate, and we do celebrate the life of Mary Maher, we thank God for the wonderful gift of her life. We thank God for all the love that she shared with so many, especially to her husband Jimmy, her family, her siblings, her extended family, especially her revered grandchildren. And we thank God for Mary's generosity, example, and service. Today, we rejoice in the gospel message, knowing that there is a reward. Yes, there is a reward for goodness and service. There is a reward for the living of a holy life. 
Despite our sadness and anguish at this time of Mary's passing, it is with confidence that we pray to the good Lord today, asking him to take Mary Maher to himself, to wrap her closely in his arms, to enroll her among the communion of saints, and to grant her a share in the glory of Easter Sunday morning, the resurrection, and to grant her eternal life in heaven in the company of all our loved ones who have gone before her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Now we will have the prayers of the faithful, so I invite you please to stand, and we're going to have a family member to read the prayers of the faithful, so I invite them to please come forward to the same microphone that the family are sharing for this liturgy. God, our Father in heaven, we ask you to listen to these, our prayers that we present at this Mass of the Resurrection for the happy repose of the soul of Mary Maher. for the deceased members of the Roddy and Maher families. May they be enjoying eternal glory and may they be embracing Granny as she rides into her eternal home. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all frontline workers, especially carers who work tirelessly to serve the needs of others and whose work often goes unnoticed. We pray too for all the doctors and nurses who help Granny to live well into old age. May the Lord grant them strength and may those around them support them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the Church, for Pope Francis, our bishops, our priests, and all sisters who serve tirelessly in our communities. May the Lord grant them consolation and peace in these times of pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all gathered here today in body and virtually, that we may love one another as you have loved us. In this time of grieving, help us to keep our minds and hearts on your kingdom that has no ending. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pause for a brief moment and we avail of this opportunity to offer up our own personal private prayer from the silence of our own hearts. Lord, hear us. God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to listen to these, our prayers we present here today at this Mass of the Resurrection in the Church of St. Patrick's Moila for the happy repose of the soul of Mary Maher. And we pray that you will grant what we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So please be seated now. And the next part of our liturgy today is the Liturgy of the Eucharist, and that begins with the offertory procession. And two of Mary's grandchildren are just going to bring the bread and wine to the altar that we will use at the consecration of our Mass. So if they would kindly do so, and these, the bread and wine are just here at the credence table, if they would kindly present it to me.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Mary Maher, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For Christ's death, we celebrate in love. His resurrection, we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory, we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin, and do this in memory of me. We now proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Paul our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember your servant, Mary Maher, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Joseph, St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Once again, I invite you, please, to stand. And 
As one family, we now pray to God, our Heavenly Father, in the words that the risen Saviour has taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May this mingling of the body and blood of Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel down. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who came to take away the sins of the world. Happy are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. for the distribution of communion and in compliance with HSE regulations and guidelines. After I have sanitized my hands and placed, put on my face mask, I will go to you to the front of the coffin to distribute communion. So Noel Enright, or Stuart, will direct you out from your seats, one seat at a time. And then, as I say, you remove your face mask just before you receive Holy Communion and we ask you to put your face mask back on once you have received and to return them to the seat that you have been occupying. So it takes a little bit longer, but we'll do so in compliance with rules and regulations. Thank you.
And now I'd like to invite Pauline to come to the sanctuary and she would like to say words on behalf of the family and speak about her mum. First, I'd like to thank Father Leo for all your kindness, Father, to us and especially to Mammy during the first lockdown when you called to the window and say prayers with her. Thanks too to Tommy for your kindness and support in these difficult days for the family. And to Bridie for your heavenly voice. Mammy always loved to hear you sing. And to all of you here present and those online, Thank you for being here, which is something Mum said regularly to her helpers in recent times. Three words to capture something of Mum are faith, fun and family. Faith. Mum was born May 21st, 1926 into a faith-filled family near Carrie Castle, the third child of Jim and Kate Roddy. The rosary, as Father said, was prayed daily and became a practice Mum held firm to all her life long. And in her 70s, she was a member of the Carmelite Third Order and was a Eucharistic member in this church, something she felt so privileged about. Two trips to Medjugorje in her 80s brought her many happy memories. But closer to home, she loved to attend the, the August Novena in Knock. Faith kept mum going through thick and through thin, and she had a particular devotion to Our Lady and to Saint Padre Pio. Next to fun. Dancing was a big part of the fun in life for mum. In her youth, she attended as many dances as she could in Lavy Hall outside Charlestown, making up all sorts of excuses to her mother to get there. At age 21, she met Daddy, and they married three years later in Carrie Castle Church, April 19, 1950. In later years, Mum loved to dance in Chalk Marie in Gertrude, and has the fondest of memories of singing Red as the Rose on the Banner de Bus Home. Mum also loved the day centre in Tubbacurry, playing cards and having a chat with whoever sat beside her. She had such a gentle and kind nature and loved everyone to be included. A comment from the condolences on RIP mentions that it would do your heart good to meet her. And the word lady features a lot in those messages. And lastly to family. Having given birth to eight children, Along came 16 grandchildren and, at last count, 10 great-grandchildren. Mum loved all of us. While praying the rosary, she would pick out someone for each decade and pray a particular intention for them. Mum loved stories, and I'll tell one short one. In the 1990s, grandchildren would come from London and spend their summer holidays in Cashel. And a story we often share in the family shows mum's quick thinking and get things done attitude. The two granddaughters in their early teens arrived into Charlestown on the coach from London. And in their excitement of meeting their granny, the bus took off to Ballina with their luggage. Mum hailed down the first car that came along containing a woman, her son and a dog and bundled the two granddaughters into the car and ordered the woman to follow that coach. The day was saved and the luggage was retrieved in Swinford. Yes, Mum loved to see all of us coming, but she hated to see us going as we hate to see her going now. And while the last while has been difficult, it helps us all to remember that Mum had many, many happy years in Cashel, 
and lived a very full life, as Father outlined. Mum, in particular, loved to walk and often talked about how she used to walk round Ballincurry. But as she grew older, the walks got shorter. Then she made it down to Mylock Bridge. Then it was reduced to Killing Cottage. Then to Paddy Leonard's Gate. Then to Mike's Gate. Then to Tommy's Gate. And then no more. So sleep tight, Mom, in your new heavily home. Lay grow more, slow on August Bannock Lath. Amen. kind and endearing words about your mum. I'm sure she's smiling down from her new celestial home upon us today. Indeed, I'd like to thank the Maher family collectively for their cooperation in understanding and implementing the government regulations for the celebration of funeral masses at this time of pandemic. I would also like to thank the family members who assisted with our liturgy today. Despite restricted numbers, we had quality here, and we certainly pray together as family, and that's what your mum would have liked and enjoyed most. So thank you for your involvement and your participation. I'd also like to thank our organist, Mary Frayne, and her son, Owen, our flautist, and Bridie Giblin, our soloist, for their musical gifts and talents and for enhancing our liturgy so considerably this, this morning, this afternoon. I'd like to thank the ladies of the Altar Society here in Moyla for preparing the church for this celebration by cleaning and sanitising the church. I'd like to thank our IT engineer, Rory O'Brien, for your professional assistance. And I'd like to thank also Tommy Howley and Marty Harkin, our undertakers, you're very welcome to Moila, and you're always welcome in Moila. And thank you for your guidance and professional assistance also. So with those thoughts in mind, I invite you to stand for the final prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, Mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, Mary Maher may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so now we have the prayers of final accommodation. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Mary. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness now, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Mary again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. And I will now Firstly, bless Mary's coffin as a sign that in baptism she became a member of the Christian family. And then secondly, I will incense her coffin as a symbol that Mary, as a member of the baptized Christian faithful family, that she was a possessor of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And our organist will play an instrumental piece while I bless and incense Mary's coffin.
Your response is, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto Mary, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Father of mercies, into your hands we commend our sister Mary Maher in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Mary in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Mary forever. In peace, we take Mary Maher to our place of rest. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. Yeah. 